If we can't go to the southern parts of Europe just yet, the southern parts of Europe has to come to us. And I have chosen two beautiful gins that really represent France and Italy, and that incorporates these light floral citrus notes that the Mediterranean area is so known for. And that looks absolutely stunning on any shelf. Let's take a look at my two new Mediterranean gin brands. Hi guys, or should I say bonjour or buongiorno, and welcome to another episode of High on Gin. I admit, I miss going to the southern parts of Europe, and since I can't go there, as I said, I want to bring the Mediterranean area to me. So I went online shopping and I did some shopping at ginboutique.dk. I'm going to make them an offer you can't refuse. And I chose these two gins here to take a closer look at. The new U gin from France and the Gies gin from Italy. But let's start with the French U gin. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? Well, let me help you answer that question. Eugene is made by Spiritique, uh, that are uh, located in the world-renowned region of Cognac in France. The company states that they take pride in making every little detail unique, from the bottle design to the recipe, but still stay true to the craftsmanship and the tradition of the area. And by looking at this bottle here, well, I have to say true really really beautiful design and when I look at this gin you know it reminds me of a combination between the Isle of Harris gin and the Lynn and Lime gin two beautiful designed uh, gins I love this green glass collar here this swirly design the, the feel of having the bottle in my hand when you hold it and you know looking at the contour here of the bottle this little uh, neck label here and the large stopper, it really reminds me of a French model on the runway wearing a designer scarf and, and a large summer straw hat. I love the design of this. And if we take a closer look at the inside of the, of the bottle here, the gin itself. Wow, so fragrant. Oh yeah. It's made with this very aromatic and very fragrant yuzu uh, citrus fruit. And if you're not familiar with this yuzu citrus fruit, it has this taste of a hybrid between lime, lemon and grapefruit. I love yuzu in a gin and this crystal crisp profile it gives to any gin. The yuzu is combined here with some Szechuan pepper, some coriander, some juniper that really gives the you know, the gin some body and some slight spiciness and, you know, some length to it. And, you know, it goes from these subtle citrus flavors to start with, and then you have this boost and this very long aftertaste. As you can imagine, these flavors makes a beautiful gin and tonic. You know, it makes it fresh and sparkling. It just takes you right back to a warm summer night with the, on the beach, you know, the warm sand and the happy days to come. Of course, go full Mediterranean on this one. Full, uh, use a Mediterranean tonic, tons of ice as always, a slice of pink grapefruit if you can get fresh use of fruit, and a sprig of rosemary. Happy days, I say, happy days. And the next gin I wanna take a closer look at is the Gies gin from Milan. And again, I must say, I just love the design of this bottle here. It, it reminds me a bit of the American gin Coval gin and their design, but this is, has an even cleaner and simplistic look to it. The simple uh, complexity of the design is, I think, so catchy. GS Gin is bottled uh, and you have used this, um, this silk screen printing glass uh, method and, it, and it's, uh, it's um, inspired by the floors of the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele, one of the oldest active and probably one of the most beautiful shopping malls in, in the world and a major landmark in Milan. I love how I can feel the printing on the bottle. It feels like, you know, these little gold threads 
that's kind of woven around the bottle. Beautiful, I think. The gin is made from uh, 18 uh, botanicals and quite cleverly the DS Gin has divided these 18 um, botanicals into six categories to give a better understanding of how the gin is constructed. First, there is the base, uh, the foundation of the gin. It contains uh, juniper berries, coriander seed and angelica root. Super classic, but super important when you want to create a good gin. To strengthen the base, they have added some woody notes. Uh, here, they have added uh, cassia and cardamom seeds. On top of that, at the third layer, they have added some mineral and herbaceous notes like fennel seeds, mint leaves, thyme, and earth almonds. Not to be compared to normal almonds, but also known as chufa, and that provides this almond coconut taste. On top of that, they have added some fruit notes like golden apples and orange peel uh, that both are naturally dried at low temperature. And then as a fifth layer, they have added, of course, some uh, citrus notes. And, you know, they have created this citrus layer with adding, by adding um, uh, verbena citrus leaves and melissa leaves. And then finally, to complete it all, they have added some floral notes like rose petals, chamomile flowers, violet flowers, orange flowers, and hibiscus. Let's try it. Wow. You know, it's really floral in your nose. I definitely get the, uh, the golden apples and the, the alcohol there. You know, the sweetness from the apple. There's a lot of things going on, but you know, it's very, very intriguing. Definitely the, the sweet, sugary apples is, is there. Followed by the citrus zesty feel. And the alcohol is kicking in like that, you know, taking this mouth feeling to, to the next level, so to speak. The alcohol, when it starts to retract, I feel the chamomile there is, becomes more present, leaving this slight dryness in my mouth for a pretty long time. Wow, what a journey it has. You know, it's super, super complex. And I think the interesting thing here is that every time I taste this one, you know, it gives me a new, uh, you know, some new details. And with all these different layers, you can really twist the gin in the direction you, you want to go. You can go pretty classic with an Indian tonic, of course, and maybe some lime. Or you can go full Mediterranean again and use the Mediterranean tonic and some orange uh, zest. The choice is yours. So guys, there you have it. My two new Mediterranean gin friends that really brings back the summer into your glass and that looks great on any shelf. But be aware, I predict that these gins here will not uh, last long if they stay unattended. They both make a fantastic gin and tonic that really screams good times and happy days, that gives you this happy, fresh, and vibrant feel in the gin Well, summer is definitely on its way. Well, at least in my gin and tonic. Until next time.